Welcome to Technology Today, which features Lawrence Livermore and Sandia National Laboratories. I'm Elizabeth Reyes, and as you can tell, we're on location today. We're at the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair, which is being held this year in San Jose. It started in 1950 and has been held every May since in different locations. Since it was right in our own backyard, we thought we should come down and take a look. More than 1,200 students from across the country and around the world are here competing for $3 million in prizes. This is the Olympics, the World Series, and the World Cup of science competition for high school students. These students had to beat out other students at local and regional fairs to earn a spot here. Collectively, as a group, they beat out one million other students to get here. This is truly the best of the best. Among this elite group are three students from Pleasanton and Livermore. They earned a spot here by winning the Tri-Valley Science and Engineering Fair, which is co-sponsored by Livermore Lab. Joining me today is lab employee Karen Kiernan, who is director of the Tri-Valley Science and Engineering Fair. Karen, welcome. Thank you. Now, you and the students have been here since Sunday, it's almost a week. What's it been like yes. being here? It's wonderful, Elizabeth. It's a combination for the students of not only things that are motivating their science intellect, but they're also having fun and gaining new friends. And one of the things that's really nice for them here is they get to meet people that are interested in the same things they are, sat, math, science, computer science, and engineering. So. Uh, They've had a really good time. So have we. It's just as much hard work for us as the chaperones, though, as it is for them. There's always something going on. Now, as director of the fair, this is your fifth year at the International yes, Fair. Yes, it is. And ha does it change each year for you? There's always something different. Of course, the students always have a different personality. They've always has a different aspect. This is the first time we've entered in mathematics. David has entered, entered in math. And the girls uh, in a team compete against all teams, but they are actually in behavioral sciences as far as their discipline. And how is this fair different for them than the Tri-Valley Fair that they won in March? Well, actually, we try very hard, even though we're on a much smaller scale, to do exactly what they're going to have done here in the way of judging and what to expect. This prepares them so they know what's going to happen to them here. Makes them a little more at ease and able to uh, be judged, I think, a little better. Oh, that's great. So. Now, Karen, how did the Tri-Valley Fair get started and how did the laboratory become uh, one of the organizing sponsors? Well, we actually decided a number of years ago with our laboratory in Sandia, and particularly in all the technical companies in the Tri-Valley area, when we looked around, we didn't have a science fair. So we started working to gather sponsors. Now we have uh, six major operating sponsors and about 30 other contributing sponsors across the Tri-Valley where we get funds and support and that type of thing. And now we had this year, I think, 246 students oh, from great. 18 schools across the Tri-Valley competing. It's, it's really terrific. That's great. And I think I saw in the program that they also had an opportunity to meet Nobel laureates. Yes, they always have an evening with the Nobels, as they call it. And this year, because California actually has quite a few Nobel laureates here with Stanford and UC Berkeley, there was 10 of them plus two Charles Draper Award winners, and the Charles Draper Award is like the Nobel Awards for Engineering. So they had the opportunity to hear from them what their life was like and ask them any questions they wanted about their career or what they did as a hobby. Oh, what a great opportunity. It, it's a wonderful opportunity. Karen, before we head inside to check out the exhibits, why don't we take a moment to meet our Tri-Valley Science and Engineering Fair winners. Great, I'd love to introduce them to you. We have Emily Sweeney, and Sadie Tierney, they're students at Amador Valley High School in Pleasanton, they're our team winners, and David Sprain from Livermore, who's our homeschooled student. Great, welcome. Can you tell me a little bit about what the International Fair has been like this week? Um, it's been really interesting. We've met, probably the coolest thing that we've experienced so far is just meeting all these different people from so many different countries. There's over 43 countries here. Um, we've been hanging out with people from Argentina, and we've had a pin exchange. Oh, fun. And that's where we give our little Chai Valley Science pin to um, people from other states and other countries. Oh, great. So it's been really great meeting all these new people. How many pins did you bring to exchange? Um, I actually wasn't able to come that to the pin exchange, so that might yeah. be directed towards Sadie. OK. We had, Sadie. A, we had a bag full of pins, and so we were fortunate enough. Some countries didn't have as many pens as we did, but we had a bag full of pens so we could exchange from different countries. So it was really cool. Great, great. Yeah. And David, what's been a highlight for you at this fair? It was nice to meet the winners of the Nobel Prize oh, in wonderful. the past uh, few years. 
and to see lots of people from other countries. Oh, great, great. Well, it sounds like it's been a great experience. Yeah. Why don't we head in and take a look at their projects? Now we're in the math section where we're going to be chatting with David Sprain about his project. He was the senior sweepstakes winner in the Tri-Valley Fair for the individual category. Hi David. Hi. Now can you tell us a little bit about your project and how you came up with this? Certainly. This project is about a board game called Snake that mm -hmm. I invented. In the game of Snake you play on a triangular game board. The snake starts here in the middle. On each turn the two players take turns up placing one of these three patterns at the head of the snake to make it longer. Each pattern has two parts. One part becomes part of the snake and the other part is left as an extra piece that you can come back and use later in the game. Great. You win the game or you lose the game by hitting the edge or getting stuck so that you can't make a move. By ending the game, you lose. So you have to stay away from corners and edges and at the same time force your opponent to hit a corner or an edge to win. Now how many people what? can play the game? Two people play Two the game okay. and they take turns making moves. Okay. What I did in my project was I wrote a, a computer program that searches all the moves and decides after it has tried all the moves and looked at the outcomes, it decides who will win and tells them what moves they can make to win the game. Um, on the small board I was successful in analyzing the game using this program. It can win the game at any time and it would always win it on the small board. However, the large board I wasn't able to analyze because it turns out it would take between 600 and one and a quarter billion years to complete. So I gave up on the large board. I've just been using the small one since then. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I don't think we could uh, play the game for a billion years. I don't believe so. Now, this was mathematically based, right? Is that why it's not a yes. computer? The game, is, the game is a mathematical game and the analysis of it is all mathematical. I only use the computer as a tool to arrive at the conclusion. Now what led you to um, do this, to, to come up with the computer game to analyze? Well, I wanted to win the game of Snake and okay. this allows you to always win it. Had you already been winning it before you did the computer program? Well, it's a lot like chess, you know, you can create strategies and there's stuff you can do to sort of trick your opponent, but there's mm -hmm. no absolute guarantee without the program. Are you planning to expand on this for next year or do you think you'll come up with something all new? I'll probably come up with something new for next year. Oh, great, great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We are in the Behavioral Sciences area, which is where we find our senior sweepstakes winners from the Tri-Valley Fair. Hi. Hi. We're joining me today is Emily 
Sweeney and Sadie Tierney, and they're going to tell us about their project. How did you guys come up with this project? Well, I'm um, really into psychology and interested in psychology, and Sadie's very interested in biology and anatomy. I've always loved learning about how the different hemispheres of the brain interact, so I've always loved anatomy. So in my anatomy class, we were watching this video on how memory or emotion can promote memory. So I told Emily, we have to do something like this. It's really cool. But then we found out that someone had done a project like that last year. Mm -hmm. So I decided that maybe we should take it a step further, and if emotion does promote memory, then within an emotional situation, females should remember more than males in that same emotional situation. Oh. So that's what we decided to test. Right. So we decided to take, uh, make two videotapes. They're both a video, uh, video clip of a guy skydiving. He's waving with his friends. And one video clip has a story, an emotional story. With um, You can see over here, they have, these are the two stories. They're nearly identical in length, but they have the same basic facts. One is considered an emotional story. He goes through many tragedies, like death and disease, while the other story is boring, basically. <laughs> he gets up, he goes to school, he goes through everyday life, and it doesn't have any emotion. We were trying to make a video that would just promote emotion. So throughout both stories, although one is emotional, one is non-emotional, mm -hmm. they have ten consistent facts, kind of irrelevant facts, like his name, the color of the Jeep, facts okay. that aren't really important, that, but that we were hoping people who saw the emotional video mm -hmm. would retain without even really knowing it. So we tested 494 students, which was 24 classes. At Amador? At Amador High School. Mm -hmm. It was uh, freshman and sophomore English classes. The reason why we chose freshman and sophomore English classes is because as a freshman and sophomore in high school, you take basic English, and in order to randomize the students, everyone has to take English. As for a senior, can take either social justice or advanced comp, and that could vary the students and how they learn. Okay. So it was in order to have the students randomized. Mm -hmm. So 12 of the classes saw the non-emotional video, and the other 12 saw the emotional video. Mm -hmm. And once they were finished watching the video, we asked them to write down an emotional rating on a 3x5 card that we provided. and. The reason we did this was not only to distract them, because we didn't want them to know that we'd come back and test them, but okay. also we used it later um, for statistical analysis. So then we came back a half hour later to both classes, whether they saw the emotional or non-emotional video, and gave them a 10-question multiple choice quiz. Uh, these are, this, is, this quiz is on the same 10 facts that are consistent through both stories. Okay. So we could test all of the students, and the only difference is the emotion content okay. in the video. And we also had them circle the emotional rating that they wrote on the card 30 minutes earlier, and we had them circle their gender so we could compare those. And do statistical right. analysis. But before we made the videos, before we tested the students, before we did anything, we sat down and we thought of everything that could go wrong. Because in a behavioral study, there's so many biases that can confound your data. So, for like example, time of day bias. Kids could be tired in the morning, first period, or mm -hmm. anxious for lunch right before lunch and not be paying attention. So we did every single period of the day in order to eliminate time of day bias. We even wore the same colors so we wouldn't distract the yeah. students. We, tried <laughs> we didn't wear the same thing both days, but we wore <laughs> sort of the same colors. So. We tried to do, consistency is so important in behavioral studies. The most important thing was doing everything the same in every single classroom. So we even, like really thought it, yeah, we had like a kind of a script. We didn't read off a note card or anything, but when we went into the classroom, Sadie would go turn off the lights. I would talk to the kids. I'd put in the video. She'd talk to the kids. It was just okay. completely it consistent throughout the all the 24 classes. To so, eliminate bias. Yeah, the only thing we couldn't control was if there were certain students who, who were acting up oh. or being rambunctious or rowdy. Mm -hmm. There's really nothing we could do about it. So in order to... Well, what we did was we wrote down the classroom environment within every single class. Okay. So if we looked at class six, for example, and we said, okay, these scores males have kind of really low test scores, we could go back and say maybe, maybe that's this why. Is why. Oh, okay. Someone so, was distracting right, them from right. Um, we also took we took every single emotional rating. All the students who put an emotional rating as one, we averaged their scores. All the students who put two, and so on. And you can see in this chart up here that there's a positive association for. Um, emotional rating and test score. So it shows that as students increase their emotion, they increase their test score. The only thing deviating from that is at three, the emotional rating of three, you can see that it drops. And we don't have a for sure answer as to why it would drop there, but we were thinking that that may be because 
when students didn't really pay attention mm -hmm. or they weren't listening to us or they just didn't know what to put, they probably just circled three because oh. it's, it's safe, safe and it's right. in the middle. It's the neutral number, so they most likely. Be and did your findings um, match what you thought they were going to at the beginning? Yeah. Yes. The uh, you can kind of see on this chart back here that the average emotional rating for females was higher than males for those who saw the emotional video and also the average test score for females was higher than males. And we did um, statistical tests like a two sample t test, a uh, variance test, and have statistical analysis to back that up. Oh, that is significant. And the most important reason as to why we included the emotional rating is because what's emotional, all, we tried to use aspects that were universally emotional like death and disease, mm -hmm. but what's emotional to me may not be emotional to Sadie or someone else. Mm -hmm. So in that case, that's why we use the emotional rating. We gave someone the opportunity, if they saw the emotional video and they didn't feel any emotion, they could put one. And they were still used in our data, but our data still supported our oh, hypothesis. That's great. Yeah. Now how long did it take you guys to do this project for the tri -Valley Care? I think the biggest part yeah. was preparation. Mm -hmm. We spent Definitely. months, I think we started in October, we just spent months preparing before actual data collection. That only took two days. Everything <laughs> else, just making sure everything was consistent and how we were going to approach the data collection right. was the biggest part, and research too. So The main thing was being organized. We had little folders for every single class we went to, mm -hmm. talking to the teachers, making sure that their schedule worked with ours, yeah, okay. and that nothing conflicted, and th the main thing was just being consistent and organized. And so. what's it been like talking to the judges here? Have they, uh, <laughs> what kind of reaction have they had um, to your project? Mostly positive. They've mm -hmm. all been really positive. A few mm -hmm. suggested um, we enter it into a scientific journal or published our results, so so far it's been really good. So they've been right. real interested in the findings as well right. as yeah. the... Yeah, because they've also... Because our results have benefits to daily life. I mean, um, in our education systems, we could take this information to education systems and maybe females should be taught differently than males or they should be separated in different groups or emotion should be brought into our education system. So that's great. Right. Yeah. Now you two are both going off to college in the fall. Do you think yeah. you'll continue the study at all? Are you interested in that? We would hope that? to. I know that after we talked to a psychologist um, in our hometown and then we also talked to um, so many judges and people who are just interested in our project mm -hmm. and they're giving us more ideas about this. For example, the emotional story that we wrote is a sad emotional story, so, but that's not, sad isn't the only type of emotion. There's happy, angry, frightening. So maybe if we wrote a happy emotional story, that would promote memory even better than the sad emotional story, which could promote memory even better than the angry emotional story. Mm -hmm. And there's just so many branches that you can go off of. Oh, that's yeah. great. Well, it's a so, great project. Thank you. Now, being here at the fair, have you had an opportunity to walk around and look at some of the other projects? Yeah. Is that part yeah. of it? <laughs> there, Incredible. It's unbelievable the, how many people are here and just seeing all these projects. It's so interesting to see that we have no idea what the engineers are talking about, but they have no idea what yeah. we're talking about, so we kind of teach them about each other's projects. So yeah. it's been really cool. Oh, that's great. It's been neat. Well, thank you so much for telling thank us about you. your project and good luck. Thanks. Thanks. Karen, in addition to the students from the Tri Valley Fair, I understand we also have some other representatives from our fair as well. Can you? Tell us yes, who's here. we're very lucky this year. We had an opportunity that Intel uh, afforded us to send one of our administrators and teachers from one of the school districts that participate down here, all expenses paid by Intel, to go through the teacher training. So we have Linda McGuire from the school district of Livermore and Susan Johnston, the physics teacher at Granada High School, here as a team. Welcome, welcome. What's it been like to be down here for the week? Susan? Well, it's been incredible. We've heard all kinds of um, lectures and discussions and training on how we can better incorporate independent research into our classrooms and also in our district as a whole. Oh, great. So. And what, what are you going to take home from here to the district? We've had the opportunity to look into the idea of motivating uh, our teachers and our students. Uh, what incentives work? How do you get more kids hooked into this fantastic experience that we have for them. Uh, being a part of this international fair is just an incredible experience. We actually have been working as students this week because that's been an action research project that we've been uh, assigned is to figure out what are other motivators that actually get kids to uh, commit as much time as they do in order to reach this level of competition. Oh that's great and is that a study that's going to help you at the Tri-Valley Fair and in the district? 
Absolutely, it'll help us. We'll bring that right back, and we've already decided on a certain timeline to incorporate that into our district, and hopefully we'll be able to be real successful at that. Now, I understand you had a very special lunch. Uh, would you like to tell us about that? Well, I had a phone call on Tuesday morning. Hello, Susan. Yes, this is Leon Letterman. As a physics teacher, there's no one that I more admire. Dr. Letterman is a Nobel Prize winner and also an advocate of physics first in the high school curriculum, which Granada High School follows. And so we spent an hour on Tuesday afternoon discussing physics teaching and asking questions just as though he was a, another teacher. And he signed his latest book for me. And he said, Making, or teaching physics makes us colleagues. And he was just incredible. Oh, that is a wonderful opportunity. Well, congratulations for getting the week long here to, to do the study and experience the fair. Thank you. Thanks. We hope you've enjoyed today's special edition of Technology Today. Joining me again is Karen Kiernan, director of the Tri-Valley Fair. And the day after we left the fair, they had the award ceremonies. And Karen's going to bring us up to date on how our senior sweepstakes winners did at the ceremonies. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Karen. I'd love to tell you. Uh, actually, there's three ceremonies, and of course, that's the highlight of the week because the students have been busy being judged for a full day and a half. And the first ceremony is what they call the uh, government awards, and that's usually the military that are giving awards in special areas that are of interest to them, things like engineering and that type of thing, okay. get a lot of awards. The second one are special awards, and those are the ones that are, are garnered by the private industry and organizations. And then the third one on Friday, the largest one, is what they call the grand awards. And uh, in the past, we've won at the Grand Awards quite a few times, actually the last four years. But we are very lucky this year. For the first time, we also had our students, Emily and Sadie, placed with honorable mention in the special awards. They received an award from the American Speech, Hearing, and Language Association for the work in behavioral sciences. How wonderful. A great it is. It is for wonderful. Them. And uh, some of the judges for the special awards were very interested in their work. And they said they should think about actually publishing it. So to have students of that age realize that the work they put um, months of work into had actually caught their attention and possibly be publishable is really eye-opening to oh, them. They must be thrilled. They were absolutely thrilled. So were we. Yeah, so, I bet. Because we always sit on the edge of our chair every time that there's an award ceremony waiting to hear. And uh, especially with the team awards, a lot of the uh, associations don't give it to teams, only the individuals. So it's even more significant that they as a team were recognized by that Nice group. recognition right. for them. And then of course on Friday is the big awards. And uh, out of all these award ceremonies, only about 25% of the students even place and get an award. Is that so right? So it's remarkable, you know, that uh, they also got an award for third place in the team category. Uh, as you mentioned before, the teams all compete against each other. So they were competing against engineering and physics and mathematics. So they received a third place of $1,000. Oh, they must have just been we were ecstatic. Oh. They did it differently this year. Uh, in the past, they've done it by categories, first through fourth. So once your category would pass, then you knew you either did or didn't get an award. But this time, they did all of, let's say, the fourth awards. And they went through all the categories, from engineering to mathematics to the teams. Wow. And then you sit on the edge of your chair. And then they go to the third award. And you'd be sitting on the edge of your chair it's again. It's nerve-wracking. It's very nerve-wracking. <laughs> and you can imagine with, you know, 5,000 people there, which includes all of the chaperones and the parents and that, and then the 1,200 students that are there. When your name's called, you hear a lot of yelling and screaming. And uh, when our kids got called, we were right there with the best of them. Oh, that is terrific. They must so. have just been thrilled. It was. It was a lot of fun. That's we a great showing fun. for the Tri-Valley Fair. We're very pleased because a lot of those uh, fairs that we're competing against have been there for like 40 years. And some of the students do uh, additional research on the same topic. So they're into their third and fourth year of research, where oh. our uh, students were the first year of their research topic. OK, great. So now what's next for the Tri-Valley Fair? Well, we spend the summer getting ready for next year's. And uh, we review the new uh, rules that come out from Intel, because of course we go by all the Intel rules. So we'll be putting the paperwork together. And we'll be getting those out to the schools no later than October 1st. And those will be going to all the private parochial and public schools in um, Livermore, Pleasanton, Sanol, Dublin, and the San Ramon School District, which goes all the way up into Danville. And it's 7th through 12th grade. That's correct, 7th so. through 12th. 7th and 8th graders are the junior category, and the 9th through 12th are the senior category. And now the project category for the senior projects, does that stay consistent yes. every year? Yes, yes. That's the same. There's 13 different categories, and that's uh, mandated by the rules of the Intel association that we have. Okay, great. So if someone wanted to start 
working on some research now. It's not too early. Oh, no. They could have started as early as January, and they can go for 12 consecutive months from uh, last January to when we have our fair, which will be the end of March or April. We haven't quite picked the date yet. Okay, but it's always in the spring. It's always in the spring. Oh, that's great. Now, Karen, I think you had mentioned in addition to Livermore Lab, there's five other organizing sponsors? Yes, there's, uh, including us, six major sponsors. We do the organization. Of course, I'm the fair director, and we have a lot of the judges participate uh, and give their time, of course. And then uh, the Black Hawk Museum is where it's held, so they donate the space. The uh, Fundraising is done by the Tri-Valley Business Council and the Tri-Valley Community Fund. And then Chevron participates. They have uh, monetary support. And they also helped with some of the judging and uh, the administrative support this year. And then Contra Costa Newspapers. And they do a lot of our publicity. So we have a great team going. Plus, there's about 25 or 30 other organizations and businesses within the Tri-Valley that participate in other ways. So it really is a, a community effort. Absolutely. Oh, that's, that's great. That's what's made us so very successful, I think. Oh, Karen, thank you so much for telling us more about the fair, and thank Thanks you for listening. joining us today. You're very welcome. If you would like more information about the Tri-Valley Fair, please check the website at http colon slash slash lasers dot dot gov slash lasers slash tvsef. We hope you've enjoyed this special edition. Thank you. And if you, to comment on today's show or to suggest topics for future shows, please write to us at Technology Today, P.O. Box 808 L-797, Livermore 94550. Thanks.